Alright, welcome back to Morning Live. And as I told you before you took a break, we want to major on matters STEM. Science, technology, engineering and mathematics has been a problem for so many people. Even men out here, my friend, people are doing badly in terms of those <laughs> subjects even in school. Some are willing to drop those subjects in Form 2, but you know very well you can't drop. But in, in studio, we have two uh, ladies. Uh, that is uh, Miss Masi Orangi, developer manager. Um, that is Atandela. And of course, our Mudoni Wanyoike team leader at InstaDeep. We want to dwell on matters STEM because as it is, it's been a long topic. You know, it's been back and forth. Oh, why are women not in STEM? It's such things. Karibuni sana. Good morning. Good morning. Happy you. Valentine's. Oh, to you too. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> Um, when you talk about STEM, I'll start with you, Marcy. It's something that has been a topic. A research comes out every year. Every year. Yes, yeah, so women are kind of bridging that gap, bridging that gap. Now, it's, it's, it's kind of improving in one way or another. Now, what's your opinion on uh, more young ladies, especially, coming into now this, they say, uh, the hard corner of intellectuality where by now STEM applies? I think, um, for starters, thanks for having us in studio, Karibu, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's, yeah, like research shows that the numbers are growing. Mm -hmm. um, I totally agree, but I think we can do better. Currently, the average global percentage of women in tech and STEM, um, you know, industries is around 7%, and I think we can go higher. So there is need for us to actually look at what are the opportunities for us to bring in more women in tech, where can we actually start, which needs to be earlier on in life and not much later when people are looking for jobs. So I totally agree with the research. Numbers are growing, but there's much more that we can do. Okay. Um, when, when you talk about now um, just trying to be consistent with what is happening, maybe Mudoni, what can you tell us about um, the situation on the ground? Are the young ladies embracing uh, the fact that STEM has to be achieved here? Um, I think they are. I run a community of women who work in data science and mm -hmm. machine learning here in Nairobi. And over the years, we've seen the numbers grow. And not just in, in participation or showing up, but in actual um, having people working in data science or having people leading in data science positions in the country. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think I would attribute a lot of the growth to representation. So we are seeing um, on the news, for example, and on TV and on social media, people we can identify with. And once you're able to see that, then you start to think that these are achievable things. When you see women and men who've excelled in STEM despite their background grounds or where they're coming from, mm -hmm. then it starts to, to, to ring in your mind that I can actually do this. And then when you put your hands and your mind to it, then it begins, okay. begins to happen. Okay. Yeah. Now for you, how was it uh, and the fact that now you picked that uh, a corner where maybe so many uh, young ladies are afraid uh, of actually going to, uh, uh, even in universities, uh, you see the ladies actually just heading from our vice chancellors, chancellors uh, to even uh, the heads of department, the deans, mm -hmm. who had, when you find communication, um, human resource, that's where we find the young girls and of course our ladies coming in to lead that's, that's, that's groups. Now, what inspired you to now focus on uh, such a, what we call hard, hard subjects? <laughs> I think for me, it was more of serendipity, but also like um, being surrounded by people who I could look up to. Mm -hmm. So in other words, mentors, really, mm -hmm. really important. People who I could go and ask, hey, what does it mean to actually study computer science in campus? Okay, okay. What comes after? Mm -hmm. So it became much clearer with time that you know, being a developer or being a woman in STEM or in mm -hmm. tech mm -hmm. does not just necessarily mean that you have to be okay. developing okay. or a software developer. Okay. Currently, um, at Andela, I spearhead developer relations, mm -hmm. which is more of outreach and engagement for developers okay. in the tech communities. Mm -hmm. And that is just one of the many other areas that mm -hmm. we can actually, you know, um, dive into. Okay. So I think it's just the idea of knowing that there is much more opportunities than just hardcore developers. Okay. I mean, uh, machine learning is coming. Uh, Wanyoke has mentioned that, you know, um, big data, data science, ETC. And these are all opportunities that people can venture into sure. and they're still under STEM. So I, I think it's just more of, you know, making sure that okay. we continue talking about the diverse opportunities that are there in STEM so that it's not a narrow path that people think it is, Absolutely. which is not. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now, what are the obstacles? I understand you're surrounded by men out there. Uh, for example, um, 
what is actually the obstacle because now when we when we talk about issues regarding um women in uh, science technology engineering mathematics mm -hmm. i believe um so there's some obstacles when for example you're doing well there's a challenge here a man who is actually just gurumaying in kando yako hapa anasema wewe you una nikanyagia hapa you're a woman you get what i mean eh? yeah. so what are the challenges first of all um, I think for me, I come from, and this is, I call it my privilege. Mm -hmm. I come from an env a very enabling environment okay. where my father was never um, offended that I was performing well, mm -hmm. for example. It was never so he was an inspiration, issue. Actually. Yes, he was very inspirational. Mm -hmm. And to him, it was never a question of, are you a girl or a boy? It was, are you doing your best? Then I went to school, uh, to a girls' high school, for example, mm -hmm. where it was never, we had a full sciences class and a full humanities so class. So you had to, there's no option, you had to take all the sciences. Um, yeah, and all the classes were full. It wow. was never that, um, I went to Marymount, it was never that the sciences class had fewer people. So physics full. Yes. Chemistry full. Yes. Mm -hmm. So coming from that background um, taught me that the, the thing with having women in STEM, the biggest mm -hmm. challenge is a self-limiting belief. Okay. When we come out outside to the world and hear that there are fewer women in STEM, mm -hmm. then you start to see yourself as the one. Okay. And um, then that creates something in you that mm -hmm. makes you um, start to mm -hmm. lower your standards, start to lower okay. how good you can be. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest challenge in having women in STEM, and even men, mm -hmm. is the self-limiting belief. Okay. What is it that you think is possible? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Masi, is it mm -hmm. is the matter of being, uh, you see, when you talk about intellectual uh, ability, yeah. sometimes the people who are not good in mathematics mm -hmm. um, from primary school, but they catch up in high school. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you see a parent trying to give up early. Especially, you see, we are products of how our parents have actually just uh, shaped us in one way or another. So you find I'll be good from class 6 to 8. I will be kind of shaky in mathematics and sciences. Mm -hmm. But from, from 2 to 4, I'm good. You get it. Yeah. So how does it go around? Because she mentioned her father was uh, her co-inspiration. Now, to the parents out there, do you think sometimes there's fear for my child? Eh, physics. Utanguka. When you go one from one, from mm -hmm. two, me chini kabisa. Please don't take physics. You know what I mean? Eh? Yeah, how, yeah. How can we change this, especially for the girls? I think, yeah, we need to accept that um, as it is, it's it's currently like a challenge in society. Mm -hmm whereby like people who are surrounding you probably don't have the i'd say the confidence that you know you venturing into mm -hmm. tech and stem related um industries you'll actually not succeed and i think on the contrary it should be more of trying to see like what's happening right now what okay. are the opportunities that are there mm -hmm. like i mentioned before it's not just programming right you can be a designer you can be a networks engineer you can be a developer relations manager mm -hmm. like i yeah, am sure. right sure. um so i think it's just more of i think for the parents what i'd say is network some more, all right? Um, be in these tech-related forums mm -hmm. so that you get to hear from people who are in the industry. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for you to see, hmm, there's actually someone who went to this high school, went to campus, and is now doing a really good job, yeah. or a really fulfilling um, job in a STEM-related like uh, industry, ETC, or just go to this, um, I'd say like women in tech forums are there a lot, either on WhatsApp, we do meetups, these tech communities that yes. meet every once in a month. Okay. Just show up, right? Mm -hmm. And these are the areas where you'll get to hear firsthand from the people in the industry, the challenges. Okay. And in that form of networking, mm -hmm. it's easy for you to now advise and encourage okay. your your kid or, you know, the younger ones who are coming okay. in. Yeah. It's interesting that uh, the new curriculum now is, is kind of a promoting hands-on um, syllabus. Mm -hmm. Now, does it mean we'll be losing so much in terms of, you see, when I have the liberty to drop mathematics, that's dangerous. Yeah. I have the liberty to drop physics, it's, it's very good. dangerous. Mm -hmm. Where will you get our pilots, our marine pilots, our, like, engineers? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For example, 300 people have chosen a dark mechanic. You get what I mean? Yes. Eh? Is yes. it dangerous for our society, even for our generation? How, what do you think about that? I think most of what we have now is because of advancements in science and in technology. 
So I haven't reviewed the curriculum. Yeah. I can't speak much to it. Mm -hmm. But I think um, in developing curriculums, we should be looking at science and technology yeah, sure. as an enabler. Mm -hmm. The whole uh, thought that it is hard to okay. do, it's yeah, complicated, yeah. Mm -hmm. is probably not very true because yeah. there are people who've done it. Mm -hmm. So when we think of science as an enabler, then we start to find ways okay. to use science to build ourselves, to solve our challenges. Mm -hmm. So. We sh the questions I think we should be asking is, do women and men learn mm -hmm. differently? Sure. Do women learn better when mm -hmm. they are taught in a more experiential manner? Mm -hmm. uh, so if we study the patterns, mm -hmm. then I feel we'll be able to build curriculums that encourage everyone to get to uh, doing STEM if they're mm -hmm. interested in okay. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I also think in addition to that, really good like point Stubbs has brought across, in addition to that, I'd say like uh, we need to get more practical okay. before we even think of dropping these technical, you know, sciences, mm -hmm. math, ETC, mm -hmm. we need to get like practical um, lessons and the syllabus being more practical than it is theoretical okay. because that's one of the factors that people, you know, take at heart when they're deciding what subject to pick you know, what course to pick in university, mm -hmm. ETC. So I'll give you an example. At Andela, Andela is a, a tech company, mm -hmm. and we pick up, like, top technologists across Africa, mm -hmm. level them up, and they get an opportunity to work with engineering companies across okay. the globe. Okay. What we do when our fellows come in, the first few months, are actually spent doing hands-on work, either in soft skills okay. or in simulations mm -hmm. and apprenticeship, which mm -hmm. means that they actually learn and level up okay. as they are working on it. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the theory and this idea of people cramming things, yeah. and they're like, will this help me at work? No. Yeah. You actually learn learn in the job sure. and I think that's what we should embrace even across Andela, um, outside of Andela, across like the globe so that people get to see the practical side of it mm -hmm. which I think is a huge factor mm -hmm. when it comes to like promoting people coming into STEM. Okay. All right, we're now taking a short break but when we come back now I want to focus on our society. Is the society limiting our girls to progress? You know, sometimes we, we, where we grew up, sometimes you see, you know, I'm here, Sifanya here. But now, are we demystifying that fact whereby now STEM needs to be embraced? Are our societies to be blamed? All that after a short break. All right, <laughs> welcome back to Morning Live. And uh, we're talking about STEM. Uh, just to catch up with, if you've maybe joining us right now, we're talking uh, uh, about now the issue of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which is very instrumental for our society to grow economically also, because as much as we're escapists trying to fit in in other disciplines in studio, I have two brilliant ladies who are telling us more about Modoni, and of course, Masi telling us more about uh, all this. And trust me, we were at our, our society. I believe our parents, while they were growing up, there's an aspect of uh, you belong to the kitchen. So unfortunate. So unfortunate. You belong to the kitchen, you belong out there just trying to sort out the kids, the men go bring it back. But I believe where I'm seated, this could have been sorted out if they, like, the knowledge could have started earlier enough mm -hmm. just to bring our, our young women to, at power with the men. Do you think also it, the statistics presently has to be blamed on this society? Yeah, for you, Marcy, that is. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think, well, um, it's just the environment as it was when we were growing up. Of course, things are different right now compared to like when I was in, I'd say, like primary school or high school. I'll mm. give you an example. So I went to an amazing school in high school, Bahati Girls mm. in Nakuru. Okay. And uh, on uh, getting to form three... Every, every school is always amazing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but of course. There, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> That's part of the reason why I'm here. So, <laughs> <Yes>. hey. <laughs> So when we got to Form 3, you had to choose like subjects you want to pursue and drop others. Mm -hmm. So before we got to Form 3, everyone who was ahead of us through Bahati Girls had never taken um, the option of three sciences, okay. right? And this was because, hey, we, we know that uh, we are good probably in chemistry alone, and then now you can take it any other humanity and for us it was more of give us this yeah. opportunity mm -hmm. let us show you that it is actually possible for us as a school to take up three sciences and still perform 
even better than we used to, right? Mm -hmm. And it was more of, hmm, okay, let's, let's try this out, all right? So we were actually the first um, class in Bahati Girls to actually take up three sciences all the way to KCSE. Wow. And we performed really well yeah, on a cool. national scale. Yeah. So I think it's just like, um, I won't blame it on, you know, why did they, you know, not pick up three sciences or give that opportunity before. I think it's a matter of how society, like you say, was at that time because it was more of who's actually gone ahead, who has excelled mm -hmm. and has taken this path that we can actually take as an example mm -hmm. to also encourage others. Absolutely. But as it is right now, that is changing. Mm -hmm. Like we have, I'll give you an example. Um, Dr. Chao Mbogo is the head of computer science department at okay. KMU currently. Okay. She's a lady, she's yes. Kenyan, sure. right? Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Shiko Gitao is the head of product at Alpha, Safaricoms mm -hmm. Alpha, sure. and she's a lady, she's Kenyan. Like, mm -hmm. people have gone through this path, they have mm -hmm. excelled, they, they're in, even in leadership positions, and it's now a matter of, hey, we already have like uh, mentors and people to look up to, mm -hmm. so it's easier Absolutely. compared to back Absolutely. in the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Irene Koki Mutongi, who <laughs> celebrated Amazing the whole lady. continent, yeah. the first Dreamliner yeah. captain. Mm -hmm. You get good on me, the yeah. first woman, yeah. Dreamliner <laughs> captain. Already, that, that, that brought the question, where are the other women in aviation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, av aviation is also part of STEM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have to be good in mathematics and physics and even uh, geography some part yeah. to be uh, just an, 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 a pilot. So Irene was a pioneer in this field. Do you think now um, he has pace, that is, has inspired more young ladies now to push? You see, um, you've mentioned the mathemat mathematicians who are heading the departments. Mm. Irene is in this part uh, um, a very able uh, captain at the yeah. Dreamliner 787. Do you think now such ladies at the helm are inspiring our young ladies now to come and of course they mystify all this? Yeah, I mm. believe they are. Mm -hmm. I believe they are. There's something they say at Andela that uh, success is not... There's something about success. Uh, it's not mm. Well, we usually say that uh, brilliance is yes. evenly distributed. Okay, okay. Maybe opportunity is not, but brilliance is evenly distributed, okay. which is a mantra we really believe All in right. at Tandela. Okay. And yeah. the, the thing that ladies like Irene are doing is showing us that brilliance is evenly yeah, distributed. Sure. It takes time. I think there's the illusion that success and brilliance just happens in yeah. a snap. It's yeah. a process. Mm -hmm. But now when we see these people, when we hear their stories, we begin to appreciate that brilliance is a process and it takes time and it takes resilience it takes uh, briga so um, hearing these stories begins to change the narrative sure. and I would appreciate um, a story that is not one-sided uh, because most of the times when we speak about women in STEM it is thought, the, the thought in our minds is that we are building women at the expense of men. Mm -hmm. But that's not the, the point of the conversation. The point of the conversation is to, to empower people to understand that they can achieve anything that they set their minds mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of the yeah. conversation. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> Allegations of men trying to inhibit women to take STEM has mm -hmm. been on the rise because now, yes, like, mathematics, pure mathematics, you get what I mean. Eh? So yeah. um, do we need to talk to such men? Because as much as we're trying to, 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 to bridge that gap, men are always the problem sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're part of the problem because you're married, <clears throat> your husband is a doctor, but you want to pursue mathematics. There's no way you'll be at par with him in the house. That's what I'm saying. It boils down to a society. Oh, mercy. Tell us more about this. Because men also, we have a problem. We don't want challenges in the house. <laughs> like, it's like, you get what I mean. Eh? Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. becomes some sort of scorecards. Whereby, oh, mathematics, doctor. Do you think maybe there's some flexing of muscles also here? Yeah, well, there is. I think there is. But uh, as Modoni has mentioned, it should never be a one-sided conversation because we correlate, we work together. At Tandela, I said, I mentioned uh, we are at 20% women mm -hmm. um, currently and we are slightly over a thousand. Okay. employees at Tandela. So okay. it means like a large percentage of our colleagues are actually men. Yeah. So we cannot afford to work in silos and expect mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. come out as vic victors in this, sure. um, you know, battle, I'd sure. say. So for me, I'd say it's more of like a, a mindset change and mm -hmm. it takes time. It should not be that, hey, 
um, you know, my colleague is actually a senior engineer. Um, I don't think that's cool. I won't yeah. work with you because yeah. hey, and the flexing of muscles, yeah. you know, situation. Mm -hmm. It will be more of, hmm, um, Tabs is a senior engineer. Yeah. That's really cool because mm -hmm. she brings a unique aspect to the table mm -hmm. that probably without her, we wouldn't have, and our team wouldn't have brought out like a very good and, you know, relatable product to the world. Okay. So the other thing we need to think of is like we cannot run away from the fact that mm -hmm. our, our globe, our users, our yeah. society yeah. is both male and female, sure. right? Sure. So if we are looking at um, who are these people who are going to constitute the teams mm -hmm. that are coming up with the products we are creating mm -hmm. there needs to be an equal balance mm -hmm. so that you also get to cater for your users mm -hmm. who are both male and female mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so i'd say it's just a mindset change right okay. Okay. look at it from the positive side like what is a woman in tech a woman in engineering bringing to the table and making your team unique and a step ahead right mm -hmm. and with that i think then it will not be like a battle it will be like come let's work together let's collaborate mm -hmm. because you bring in a unique aspect mm -hmm. as a guy in tech mm -hmm. i bring in a unique aspect as a woman in tech let's work together okay yeah interesting yeah. Uh, the challenges of course they're there for mm -hmm. women in stem especially the leaders now um when you see you are assisted by a man sometimes it becomes a problem because yeah uh, top to toppling issues can come very soon and of course even in africa Presidents, uh, let's go politics a bit. Let's just deviate a little bit. Huh? Um, in Africa, of course, in Kenya, we are, I can probably say women are in so many leadership positions. Mm -hmm. But when you go back to STEM, you're assisted by a man, of course, who you are, um, I can say, on the same rank. But because you're a woman and there's some sort of some gender, um, gender like uh, sensitivity also in that organization, do you think this man will try to pull you down? At the end of the day, I believe there's an aspect of insecurity. When you go for a board meeting, you chair that meeting, but the man is your assistant, you direct him. You know, society still, more than it is a question actually, what do you think about now? This man who tried to topple women from top, top, top leadership. I think um, the, the, the narrative that we keep seeing repeated is mm -hmm. the angry yeah. black woman the angry okay. if we think uh, a woman heading a meeting in a boardroom it's yes. an angry black woman yeah. if we think uh, a woman who's successful she's angry at home and all that mm -hmm. but it's not really true if you think about it i think it's just a narrative that has mm -hmm. been repeated so many mm -hmm. times and mm -hmm. we start to believe it but um I look at the anger and where it's coming from. We have to appreciate that there have been a lot of historical injustices mm -hmm. towards women. A lot of them continue to take place. Mm -hmm. Women don't get equal pay. Women will not get equal opportunities. Mm -hmm. We need to go almost twice as far to just get half what the men get. Those are um, our present days uh, realities. Yeah, sure. So if people understood where the anger that they think they see is coming from, then maybe we can sit at the table and try to resolve okay. issues. Okay. But um, I have seen, I work with men in my office, there are two men and myself, and we d don't have a power struggle. Yeah. At least yeah. I don't see it. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I think power struggles are created, are functions of our beliefs. Mm -hmm. So if I believe that a woman, any time a, a woman is on top, um, I'm going to have issues with them, I will definitely have issues mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. If I think that any time a man is on top, he's going to try and suppress me, it's going to happen. Okay. So uh, our society is really a function of our okay. beliefs. So changing the belief systems is going to be important if mm -hmm. we want to create equality. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the question, what is equality? And mm -hmm. that means different Absolutely. things to yeah. different Absolutely. people. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you talk about um, the pay grid, sometimes yeah. it's also another issue. Because they always think um, maybe women in STEM have no much responsibility than men in STEM. Um, the pay has been an issue for quite some time where not so not so many women are paid according to mm -hmm. what they deserve yeah. yes um what is happening also even in the hollywood actresses and even the, the it's, it's just a, a, a universal issue yeah. now do you think also this needs to be addressed because um as much as you're brilliant the same way he is brilliant the pay grade needs to be worked on like kind of balanced Sometimes not always fair to these brilliant women out here. Do you think now this also needs to be addressed? 
I think it does um, because like Modoni said, um, you know, in any, uh, you know, ideal world, if I get to do twice the amount of work perhaps to get the same or even less of what you know someone in another gender is getting yeah. there's already some you know some disparities yeah. being created yeah. there right mm -hmm. so i'd say that's one of the things that needs to be looked at because um it's a con contributing factor to you know encouraging more women to mm -hmm. come into stem and stem related courses and jobs etc okay. so what i can say also in addition to that is just to the women in tech out there who are like oh my god i'm not quite sure if i'm actually cut for the job i'd say there's nothing for you to lose just go apply mm -hmm. if anything you'll get the job you will win mm -hmm. or you will not get the job and you'll get lessons from that mm -hmm. right so be confident be confident that <coughs> yes, I can actually do it. Interestingly, just as a side note, there is usually this um, you know, connotation that when you're in a room and maybe like a question is asked and these guys and these ladies in the room, um, even if the guy won't have the correct answer or they are not sure about the answer, they will raise their hand up and give that answer like it is 100% correct, backed by research and everything. And maybe that's not the case. Mm -hmm. But women will be like, mm, I'm not quite sure, I think, blah, blah. So I'd say, just go out there, you know, be confident. And when it comes to like, um, you know, this issue of like a pay grade yeah. and then not being like on a, on a fair um, ground level, mm -hmm. I'd say, talk about what you have been able to do talk about your successes okay. do not be scared to say hey i led an x-men team sure. in doing this project and these were the results mm -hmm. talk about the challenges that you've gone through that shows how adverse you are um talk about everything that you've done so don't be hiding just because you're not so sure mm -hmm. because again um sometimes your papers speak so you put your cv a guy puts their cv on the table but because you did not give your all to yeah. share your successes on the cv yeah. the guy will be taken because they put every single thing yeah. even from 10 years ago mm -hmm. you know so be out there give your all in whatever it is that you do and then i think yeah the rest is all around also society as we said um you know policies around um making sure that pay grade is actually fair across yeah. genders yeah. etc yeah mm -hmm. well Modoni, uh, what do you think about now this issue of um trying to empower the young ladies because you are the pioneers here and i believe you are very important to these young ladies who are coming is it Mm -hmm. Very important. Now, is it wise for you guys just to just bring something on board in terms of just going to the ground and empowering these young young women? Because I believe, yeah. you know, sometimes we have teachers. Teachers are there to actually uh, just uh, hit their targets. Yeah. They are mean school. They are good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you see, um, being a destiny shepherd is not something easy. But still, I believe you can go to the ground and just touch these girls' um, heart can just guide them because as much as they're trying to do so much there's also a lot in their in their in their bucket mathematics yeah. english yeah. chemistry physics growing so, up uh, growing up also <laughs> changes in your body you are afraid there's so much going on yeah. so do you think now we need to come together as a unit to inspire these uh, young ladies um yeah i think as you spoke i realized it's something i haven't done um so with my community i focused on women who are already at university level okay. or at work yeah. and we haven't really focused on younger girls and i think that's the point where people mm -hmm. are growing that's when they start to shape their minds and their thoughts and their opinions around things um, so it's a good challenge and it's um, I feel like we are in this space to be able to create those opportunities there's a poem I love by Maya Angelou where she says that she um, I come as one but I stand as 10,000 and yeah, what this yeah. means is that the reason Masi and I are seated here is because there are women before us who made this possible. Yeah, there are women before us who, who allowed for sciences to be taught in, in mm -hmm. girls' schools, yeah. for example. Yeah. So we have our own responsibilities to mm -hmm. make sure that we are also creating opportunities for women. And I, keep pre I, I love to say this, that it's not just about opening the door and letting women in. Mm -hmm. It's making sure those who get in continue to grow. So mm -hmm. we are not just thinking entry-level jobs in yeah. STEM. Yeah. We are thinking... Mm -hmm. um, as high as as possible that is how we 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 create change okay, okay. yeah yeah 
and I think just briefly in addition to that, I like that um, currently um, in Kenya and in Africa, just looking at like our continent and closer home, that we are tr starting to embrace the you know the spirit of making sure that we challenge the girls mm -hmm. from early on. So I'll mm -hmm. give you two examples. One, there's this challenge that's global. It's called the Technovation Challenge mm -hmm. that actually takes up like uh, girls in primary school and high school, and they get to learn code and present um, you know like a prototype at the end of the day, okay. which probably answers like a, a challenge um, in their society where mm -hmm. they are. And uh, locally, we actually saw, I think one or two years ago, one of the teams that actually was a runners up in the global challenge was mm -hmm. from Kenya, wow. from Kisumu, wow. which is amazing, from mm -hmm. a girls high school mm -hmm. in Kisumu, mm -hmm. right? So embracing such opportunities, I think is really good. Mm -hmm. At Tandela, we have a program called Teen Code, okay. where our developers <coughs> here at Tandela mm -hmm. go into high schools okay. and they have created a curriculum that gets high schoolers into yeah. programming, right. a full curriculum. And okay. it's on a volunteer basis. So yeah. we get to select high schools, work with them. During the holidays, they come to our campus okay. and we get to now pass on um, you know, that opportunity for them to start knowing what is code. Okay. So that it's not like our time back in the day where sure. you get to campus and that's mm. the first time you're seeing a laptop, you know. Right, yeah. By the time right now, these people we are working with um, in teen code get to campus, they already can create a simple solution for you okay. working on your mobile mobile okay. phone. So okay. I think we are starting to embrace and we need to get you know, right. into that wagon. Thank you very much, ladies, for coming to the studio. And I believe um, we really need to really just demystify this fact. And you're doing a good job. So inspire the young ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you.